Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. Today we're going to talk about using the distributive property and we are going to be breaking apart one of the factors to make it easier to solve a multiplication problem. So our learning goal for today says I can use the distributive property to decompose units. So decompose, fancy word for saying break apart, and units is just one of our factors. Okay, so don't let that learning goal intimidate you. But by the end, you're going to tell people, oh, wow, I can use the distributive property to decompose units. And they're going to be like, holy cow, what are you talking about? And they'll just be so awesome and they'll be super impressed. So I know you guys are going to do a great job. So let's jump in and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do like a warm up problem, an application problem. OK, so it says a parking structure has 10 levels. There are three cars parked on each level. How many cars are parked in the structure? So I want you to use your whiteboard and I want you to try and draw a tape diagram. Maybe if that might help you or draw, you can solve this any way um, that you would like. I'll kind of jumpstart you a little bit and share how I would maybe set this up. So there is the tape diagram that I would draw. Okay, um, it shows that there are 10 levels, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and there are three cars in each level. So if that helps you get started, go ahead and try and solve the rest of this problem. How many cars are parked in the structure? Okay, friends, so you can see um, I duplicated each one of my levels has three cars now, so that maybe made it a little bit easier for me to be able to share with you guys. Um, so did you guys come up with how many there are? Okay, let's see what I came up with. I came up with 10 times three, okay, because there's 10 levels and there are three in each group. So there are a total of 30 cars. Okay, you could skip count to be able to solve that too. Okay, great job with that one, friends. Let's jump in and take a look at the next problem that we have. So we have an array here that models seven times three. Okay. How many threes are there in seven times three? Remember, this is a three right here. Okay. Ta-da. So how many of those threes are there? Yeah, there's seven. Okay. Notice here this dotted line, it shows a way to break apart the array. So the seven threes are broken into how many are up on the top and how many are on the bottom. So the seven threes are broken into five threes and two threes. So there's five on the top and two on the bottom. Notice how those five, like if you were to add five plus two, you get seven. So that's where that's coming from. Okay. Take a look at my number bond that I can draw that matches this. Okay, write an equation on your board that shows how to add those two parts. So how would I add the top part of this um, array to the bottom part of this array? Go ahead and pause the video so you have some time to do it and click play. Okay, so I would draw it as, or write that equation as five threes plus two threes equals seven threes. Okay, so what two multiplication sentences um, did you use to help you solve to, uh, to solve seven times three? So really, it's like you used five times three plus two times three, right? Those are the two equations to help you solve this total in your number bond of seven times three. Okay, so now we're gonna draw a second number bond where we're modeling our equations that we just shared, okay? Now, this shows how we broke apart the array, array. So we really have seven times three is our total array, as you can see. Five times three is the top part of our array, and two times three is the bottom part of our array, okay? So we're going to rewrite this as an addition of two products using this frame that I come up with, okay? So it's an addition of two products. So the first product is right here, and the second product is right here. So I want you to write that down on your dry erase board, and I want you to try and fill in those blanks, okay? Remember, this goes right to our pictures, okay? Our number bond. Use those to help you, okay? Pause the video, fill in the rest of this information on here, the missing factors, and I want you to be able to come up with, what am I talking about down here where I'm trying to add? What's gonna go right there as well? 
Okay, so go ahead and solve that and click play when you're ready to share together. Okay, friends, so here's what I came up with. If you need more time, make sure you click pause. So this first part of the number bond is five times three. That's the first set, that's the first product, five times three. The second one is two times three. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna find the product. Using those two products, I'm gonna find seven times three. So this is matching my number bond off to the left. Okay, now I could do five times three. I could skip count. Remember, because that commutative property, I can flip flop those and I can do um, five. I can count by five three times. So five, 10, 15. Okay, you could also count the um, pictures in the array. That can help you as well. Okay, and then two groups of three, I could just count by threes two times. So three, six. So 15 plus six, now I have to solve that, is 21. Okay. All right, so how does this number sentence show the number bond? Yeah, it's really because all of this here is showing seven times three, okay? So one part has five threes and the other part has two threes. So this strategy that we used, we can really call this the break apart and distribute strategy because you're breaking apart this whole array that's up here. And then we're kind of distributing it into these two products that we're adding together, okay? So the number bond can really help us see how we can find the total by adding two smaller parts. So the distributive property, even though it might seem a little bit tricky, it really is a very helpful strategy, especially when you get into um, multiplication problems that have larger numbers that might be more difficult to be able to solve. Okay, so let's jump in and take a look at a second problem. So here's my new um, multiplication problem that we're trying to solve, 10 times three. So how many threes are in 10 times three? Yeah, 10 threes, right? Because the first number or the first factor is the number of groups and the second factor is how many are in each group, okay? So what are some ways that we can break apart 10? So I just wanna find different two different numbers that add up to 10. That's all I mean when I say break apart and to find, to make a 10, okay? So I know that I could have five and five, right? Five plus five equals 10. I could also have six and four because six plus four equals 10. What are some other ones that you can come up with that we can find to break apart 10? I came up with seven and three and eight and two. Okay, so those are some different ways that we could break apart 10. Now, if we were counting apples, that would be five apples and five apples or six apples and four apples make 10 apples, okay? But are we counting apples? No, not in this problem. What are we counting in 10 times three? We're counting threes, okay? So that would be six threes and what would I add to that six to make that 10? Four, so six, um, so th sorry, so six threes and four threes would make 10 threes. Okay, so let's check out this number bond that we can use to kind of model that. Okay, so there's my 10 threes at the top, remember that's my total, and then I have six threes in one part of my number bond and four threes in the other part of my number bond. Let's rewrite this as an addition of two products using this frame that I come up with. Oh wait, hang on, first I wanted to do this. This is six threes plus four threes equals 10 threes. Okay, so now I want you to pause the video and I want you to write this on your dry erase board and I want you to fill it in the same way we just did the last problem. Okay, so look at your number bond. How did we break up 10 times three and how can we fill in this information over here? So go ahead and click, click pause and then solve the problem, fill in that information in my frame there and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. Okay, friends, I just got my marker here. So now I'm all ready to share with you to fill this in. So the first part of my um, equation here says blank times three plus three times three. So remember that's those two products, okay? The first product is blank times three and the second product is blank times three again, okay? So I know that from my number bond, I have six threes over here. So that's really six times three. And then off to the other side in my other part of my number bond, I have four threes. So that's really four times three. And then my total number bond is 10 
threes. Okay, notice we're breaking apart, let me grab my special marker, we're breaking apart this 10 into really a six and a four. The three stays the same on both parts of my number bond. Let me grab this here. This three stays the same on both parts, okay? So now let's hop in and look at this next part. I'm gonna change my color of my marker real quick. Okay, so six times three. Okay, you can count by threes six times. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. Okay, if you need to draw an array to help you with that, you can absolutely draw an array to help you with that. And then four times three, I'm gonna count by threes four times. So three, six, nine, 12. Okay, oh, I still have my special marker, hang on. Okay, so there's my 18 and then my 12. And I know that 18 plus 12 makes 30. Okay. You can also add that quick in your head. 8 plus 2 in my ones place is 10. And then 10 plus another 10 and another 10 gives me 30. Okay. So this goes back to solving this whole problem is going back to 10 times 3. Okay. So we're breaking apart that 10 and that factor 10 as a 6, or I'm sorry, a 6 and a 4. Okay, so that's all that we're doing with this one. You guys are did um, a wonderful job. Well done. Two thumbs up to you guys. So please go back over to the module and see what you need to complete for independent practice today. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here and happy to help you guys. So please reach out if you need it. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you all soon. Bye friends.